Friday, February um, 18th, 19th, I don't know. Third day here at uh, Rounders in San Antonio and today we play a tournament. 200K guarantee, $300 San Antonio, Texas Poker Masters, I believe it is called. And uh, your boy, that's me, is going to play it. And you will hopefully come along for the ride. And uh, since I don't play a lot of tournaments every year, let's, hurt, let's hope the ride is worth it. Wish me luck. Pick up action at level two of this tournament as nothing really happened in level one. Then again, nothing of real merit ever really happens in these early levels, unless you bust. Blinds at 100, 200, and antis haven't even kicked in yet. Early position opens to 600, and the hijack calls. I slide in there as well with queen jack offsuit, and the big blind comes along. Four of us see a flop of jack, four, seven, rainbow. The big blind checks, and the opener continues with a bet of $1,200 or about half pot. Hijack comes along, which honestly doesn't surprise me. If there's one thing I've picked up on here in Texas, is that people don't really like folding. At all. With top pair and decent kicker, I come along as well. The big blind isn't a quitter. He's in there too. Still four ways, and we see a queen of clubs turn. It improves me to two pairs, so great card for me. The big blind checks again, and now the opener drops in the overbet. 8,000. The hijack quickly folds, and with two pair, raise or call are both in play. This early in the tournament, and with the guy still behind me, I settle on calling, and the big blind folds. We start this tournament with 40,000 chips, and this pot is already over 23k. The river pairs the four, which could be a problem, as his overpairs have now leapfrogged my two pair. He bets 15,000. I tank for a while on this one. Ooh, let me think about this one. I take a glance at the villain here and he just doesn't look comfortable. He's giving me please just go away vibes. So I call. He says, you're good and exposes his hand. I thought I saw 610 offsuit but wasn't sure so I asked my neighbor and he confirmed. What do you show? 610. 610. 610 offsuit. Oh, I see. This is going to be one of those type days. My first major blunder, if you can call it that, happened during level 3. Blinds are now 200 and 400. Still no ante. Under the gun opens to 1300. Under the gun 1 calls, as does under the gun 2, and action is folded back to me. I look down at 6-5 of clubs and could easily squeeze here, but elect not to, and settle on the call. Out of position versus three players, I see a flop of deuce, jack, ten with two clubs. Nothing really going on for my hand here besides the six high flush draw, and I don't have position, so I check. Everyone else likes that bet size, so it checks through. The turn three of hearts is decent, giving me a gut shot. Still out of position though, so I check again. The original opener now bets 2,000, which is a bit on the small side. Both under the gun one and under the gun two fold and action is back on me. My brain is screaming, just check raise him. Just check raise him, damn it. But I wimp out and I call. The river finalizes the board with the seven of hearts. I have to bluff this. I can't win if I don't. I'm sitting here with six high. Six high. Again, I wimp out and give up. Big mistake. The under the gun player checks behind and wins this one with 8-7 offsuit. I know what I said before about players never folding. That's not exactly true. Heads up, they'd fold. Unless they had something. On the flip side, if they had something, they'd let you know by not checking. So, heads up, in the early levels, if they checked, I'd bet with almost any two. And that worked. An astonishingly high percentage of the time. On to level 5, 
400-800 and still no ante. I open ace-9 suited in early position and only get called by the big blind. The big blind checks the 10 high flop and I know what I said about just betting because they fold. Well, that's not exactly true either. Here I actually had a pair so I decided to check back when the big blind checks. The turn brings the 5 of diamonds and the big blind checks again. Well, I have to bet something at some point and it's best to do it while I can still get value from a draw he has. So I bet 2000 and he calls. He checks a final time on the river four spades and I possibly miss some value here by checking back, but that's what I do and I win this one. Level 6, 400-800 and now anties have kicked in, they're 400. Pots are starting to get bigger faster and I'm accumulating chips very quickly, mostly because I'm playing a lot of hands and constantly stealing. Here I pick up ace-queen offsuit in middle position and an early position player has limped. I decide to raise to 3,500. The big blind calls, the limper calls, and we see the flop three ways. 100% not a fan of the 667 flop, and when they check, I do the same. The turn deuce, same vibes. She checks, he checks, I check. The river ace, however, I do like this one, and when it's checked to me again, I just pot it. Either they had nothing, or weren't part of the collective because they both fold almost instantly. <laughs> Here, action is folded to me and I open king four of diamonds in late position to 3k with blinds at 500 1000 with a 500 ante. At this point, I was just opening with reckless abandon and I stopped caring if the table knew or not. Ace king, 6 5 suited, jack 7 suited, I didn't care. I was opening all of them. And they were never fighting back, so why not? Well, I guess never is a bit strong. Here, the small blind calls the 3K and the big blind shoves for 35K more, so... I've been caught stealing once when I was five. I've been caught stealing once when I was five. <laughs> Second break, and your boy still has chips. Unbelievable. <sighs> I think because I glanced up at the board, uh, average chip stack is about 74,000 chips, and I think I have maybe 85 or 90. So, tournament Jamin. Maybe that's who I am now. Maybe I'm a tournament guy. Doubtful. Anyway, we're on a 10 minute break. I have stepped outside, I'm gonna get some air. And then, you know, right back into the fray. So, wish me luck. I'm 
another table change, which is good because it means I'm still in the tournament. But it's seat six, which is bad because it's in the middle of the table and, you know, angles. Bad seat or not, upon arriving at this table, I caught fire. I guess I could provide voiceover for the next couple hands, but, meh, they don't really need it. Raise the nine. Raise. 22 Crazy 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 That would have been a hell of a flop. What I'm going to tell you guys is unbelievable. I don't even believe it. Oop, excuse me, sir. Still at Rounders. It is now, I don't know, pushing 7 o'clock. Tournament started at noon. So, I'm still in the tournament, but I'm outside in the parking lot, which means I'm running deep. 25 players left in this flight. I'm guesstimating I'm probably fifth through eighth in chips. And now I'm a tournament guy, I guess. I'm tournament Jamin. That's who I am. Um, I'm not gonna spend this whole break talking to this camera because I'm actually going to break on my break. Um, but that is the update here from Rounders in San Antonio. Your boy is going, I guess, semi-deep in a tournament structure. Guys living up to his name. We are getting late in the day, and at this point, I'm one of the top stacks in this event, and I'm kind of tired and on cruise control, honestly. Blinds at 1.53K with a 1500 chip ante. Under the gun limps, I just limp behind on the button with Jack 10 offsuit, and the big blind checks his option. I pass on firing at the Queen of Diamonds, Nine of Diamonds, Six of Clubs flop when it's checked to me, and the three of us continue on to the turn. On the turn three of clubs, the big blind checks, as does the under the gun player, and I bet 3,000 into 10,000, and only the big blind calls. The river? Not my favorite card. It's the ace of diamonds, and the big blind checks. So, no pair, no straight, no flush. And winning at showdown with Jack High, although possible, is not probable, so I need to bet. If the big blind has set the trap for me, I'm about to fall right into it. I grab 15,000 chips and move them into the middle. The big blind sighs and slides his cards into the middle as he folds. He then asks me if I had an ace. My response, of course. Ace, good. Ace, good. Huh? Ace. And you know that I know that you lying, oh girl. You join this hand post-flop and it's a doozy, so let me catch you up on the action. At 1.5K, 3K with a 1.5K ante, the hijack is open to 8,000. The cutoff calls. The small blind calls, and I call in the big blind with 6-4 of hearts. Like something out of a movie, the flop comes 7 of clubs, 5 of hearts, 8 of clubs. And the small blind shoves his last 38.5K into the middle. So now, I'm sitting with the relative nuts, with two players behind. And at this point in the tournament... There are only a handful of players left on day one with only two eliminations left to end the day. And I'm most likely second in chips. To make the story even juicier, the original opener, the hijack, is probably third in chips. Our stacks are very close, and we have massive stacks compared to the rest of the field. Game time decision was to shove and protect my hand. I say, all in. And the hijack lets out a huge sigh and goes into an infinite tank. I wish you hadn't done that, bro. <laughs> kind of glad I did if you're in the tank this long. Huh? I'm kind of glad I did if you're in the tank this long. I got, a, I got the biggest draw there is. I know 
Oh, you're trying to get him protection saying he died. He died. Dead in I know I have the best hand right now, but my stomach is sinking fast. I feel sick. That close, man. I know you have. Yeah. I, 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 I thought one of you guys had straight. But big. Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Although if you call, I mean, that changes the action and then the cards are different. I know it's a fold. I know it's a fold. <laughs> but, I mean, there's, I still, I had a lot of house. After what felt like an eternity, the hijack finds the fold. My flop straight holds up and we are now down to two tables. You're strong, but life can be furious and things can go wrong. You go, you go, we're better off tomorrow. But who knows, who knows if we get joy or sorrow. It was sort of anticlimactic at the last table of the day. I only played a few hands, one in which I raised the button with an offsuit ace and won the blinds, and another in which I checked my option in the big blind with king queen offsuit missed the flop in a three-way pot, and folded when the small blind let out. I did felt a guy with pocket nines versus pocket eights, but we weren't at this two-table configuration for very long before someone else busted. Then we were instructed to bag our chips, and we're now off to day two. <laughs> After a long, long day of tournament poker, your boy has found a bag. We have bagged flight one of the San Antonio, Texas Poker Masters with 597,500 chips. What's that mean? It means we have a healthy stack going into Sunday. We'll be back here Sunday, 2.30 to hopefully wrap this thing up. How sick would it be if I won a tournament? Tournament. And let me say this. I am not a tournament professional. You feel free to critique my tournament play, but notice I made this disclaimer before I even played a hand. The most important thing is it's day two. It's day two. We're super deep. There's 25 people left. And um... <laughs> set of jacks that last hand. The king jack, yeah. <laughs> Middle set. How am I running so deep in this tournament? I'll tell you how. I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing to, to run so deep in this tournament. I'm flopping sets. That's the key. That is the key to running deep in tournaments. Flop sets. Tournament Jamin? What? 